Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wolf Official Show. I'm your host, Carl Wolfgang Schultz, and today it's one of those zones where you have a lot of poverty. There is just a lot of poverty around the area surrounding the campus, and I don't think anybody knows why. At least I don't know why. And so I've been asking the question around lately on forums and just trying to figure out why this is so. And I've been talking to project managers that have been looking to expand UNLV and they want to make UNLV bigger. And I've just been thinking to myself about these plans and the plans are to expand. So they want to go further and I'm thinking to myself, where are they going to go? You know, are they going to buy up the areas in which we live in? Because I live in, I live right next to UNLV. So I know exactly what it's like to go to the local 7-Eleven. I know what it's like to um, walk down the street or go for a run in the morning or a run around the campus. So I'm very much aware of what is, what is going on around the campus. There's a lot, there's a lot of people that are walking around and they're walking. So there's a lot of homeless people that are walking into the campus and they, they like to sleep there. They like to just, I don't know, try to blend in with the students. They like, the homeless people like to eat. Sometimes there's events going on at UNLV and they'll just show up for the free food. I mean, who wouldn't, right? But getting down to it, you know, the, the apartments that are nearby for students to rent are ridiculous. They're very, how do I say? They're not expensive, so I mean, you can get apartments around the area for about $500, $600. And um, so it's very cheap. And I think that might help students who need apartments. But for the most part, the new freshmen that are coming into the, the university, they have, they, have a, um, they have the dorms that they stay in when they come to the, their freshman year on campus. And so, the dorms, however, are very expensive. That is ridiculous. And that just boggles my mind. I think it's about three, three or $4,000 every three months. That is insane. That is so expensive. And for what? You don't get that much. I mean, in fact, I get more where I'm at, and I'm only paying $400 a month. So, yeah. And I love, I eventually left the UNLV dorms very quickly. I left UNLV probably, I don't know, a couple years ago because I realized that they were pretty much taking my money. They made me buy into their cafeteria food. And if I wanted to stay there at the dorms, I had to get a plan. Uh, and so, yeah, I definitely was not interested in that at all. So here I am. I work at UNLV. I go to school at UNLV. And... I was born and raised in Vegas, so I do know the many different areas around Vegas that have the population, poverty, everywhere, so, and yes, there are worse areas in Vegas, but it just, you look around at the other campuses around the world, at least I've seen some pictures and, and whatnot, and I've seen some really beautiful campuses, like for example, there's a college in Colorado that I was going to go to before. I was going to go to UNLV, but so the, there was one in Colorado that actually had a lot, like it was just so beautiful, it was just surrounded by green, and then you saw the snow when the winter time was around, and it just made me think about here, and yes, we do live in a desert, so I mean, what can you expect, but, and I know they're trying, I know Vegas is trying, but specifically, the proximity of UNLV, all around it is just really bad poverty, the the crime... I mean, you can't go a day without an ambulance coming by. This is just kind of a day in, in, the, light, uh, in the life of living at UNLV. And, you, you know, there's constant people trying to walk the crosswalk and people just flying by, not stopping for people that are trying to walk through the crosswalk. So that's another concern. Uh, there's a lot of propaganda that goes on, uh, homeless people and... Um, so there's that going on. There's constant fights 
uh, going on around around the area. Uh, just saw another one the other day at 7-Eleven. So I'm not the type to just be like, okay, it's really bad economically, you know, because there are some good things. You know, the, obviously there's people that do have wealth that are going to UNLV, uh, but they're usually professors, I would imagine, people who have already gotten their undergraduate degree. And so there there are a lot of people that of different diversity. It's a very diverse campus of people coming on and off that uh, off that parking lot of UNLV. So that's that. And then I noticed that UNLV they attract a lot of people from uh, across the world. Especially there's a gaming, a um, what is it called? The uh, oh man, I can't forget or I can't remember. It's the uh, the gaming. Uh, what do they call that? There's a place that, with all the slot machines, Stan Fulton building. Uh, Stan Fulton, a little bit about him. I don't know that much about him, but I know that he's kind of like a found. He's the founder of the building. They made that building in his name because of his, I guess, success in gambling and hotel management or hospitality or something like that. And so he's... Um, that's the building there. So that gets a lot of people from across the world that come there. And it's very interesting to think that it's not all... I understand that it's not all about the students. There's a lot of other things that are going on around the campus. There are definitely a lot of other things going on around the campus. There's a lot of charity races that happen. So me working at UNLV, I noticed that there are events that take place there that are for the students so that they can open up their eyes and broaden their scope on what really is bigger, the bigger picture. So they do a good job of that when you're going to school on campus. But if you're not, if you don't live on campus, you are, I've been there before, I've actually done that, where all I'm doing is strictly driving to school, going to class, and then coming home. So that's one thing. And Another thing is actually living on campus, which I kind of recommend, but the price is ridiculous. So why, that is just insane. Like you do not, you do not want to live on campus at UNLV. I mean, it's so expensive. It is so expensive. And if you pull out student loans, you're going to be eating your student loans away at a very quick rate. So I don't really re- recommend that. I recommend that you get yourself an apartment off campus, pay your own meal, don't buy into their chow hall or their dining facility, dining commons as they call it. I wouldn't do that. I mean, I hate to say that because I know I'm pretty much taken away from their sales. But you look around, and it's nice that they offer that. Don't get me wrong. But if you if you can't afford that like most college students can't, then you're forced to go and live off campus and pretty much go grocery shopping at the nearest Albertsons or Walmart, which is very ghetto. That Walmart over there is very bad. It's it's just in a very bad neighborhood. And um, again, I've lived there in this area my whole life. I know exactly what it's like to travel through there. And I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't get off my motorcycle when I'm, when I'm driving by or whatever. I don't, I don't stop for I don't stop and talk to anybody because if you do it just gives them a reason to mug you or whatever and so I don't stop and talk to anybody for no reason I'm very much uh focused on getting home and locking my door but however that's not to say that there's not a lot of very nice people out there I just know that the area that I live in near UNLV isn't the type that you want to just stop and make friends like it's not like that maybe in the future it will as we all get along and we work together and we are capable of asking for the things that we need and um, yeah it's just I mean every day I'm constantly being asked for money people are always hitting me up for money hey can you spare a few dollars and then when I don't give them a few dollars they freak out oh what they just start screaming making like a public scene and I can't figure out why, why that is. It just, it boggles my mind. So, you know, because look at, if you look at it from my perspective, 
and then we'll try to look at it from their perspective, the people that are homeless asking for money. Half the time they're not even homeless, they just don't want to do anything, they just want to ask for money. But for the ones who are homeless, my sympathies go out to them. So, so from my perspective, all right, I'm there studying and I'm trying to learn and I'm doing kind of like what I'm supposed to be doing, which is going to school. And I'll be sitting at the local coffee bean, for example, and I'll just be eating or studying. Usually I'm studying, right? And then um, mind my own business. And then someone comes up, hey, man, can you spare some dollars? They always have a very good, very good reason as to why they need the money. And they're coming after people who are college students because they're naive. That might be a very good reason why. And, but from my perspective, I don't think that's a very good reason at all to be going after college students because they don't have that much money anyway. So why would you ask them? Like most of the time their parents are paying for college and like they just don't have any money so they're barely making it. So I don't think that's a very good strategy to, to do. But yeah, so then coming from, from the homeless perspective, obviously they just need money. And um, they get really upset, at least not all of them, but some of them uh, will just make a scene like I was saying earlier about how they want uh, no one wants to help them why is everyone so stingy and then they make you feel like a certain way but then you really you have other people who don't ask they don't open up their mouth they don't um, speak a whole lot but when they do they kind of just talk to themselves so like they're not really asking for money yeah, yeah there's a couple that I know that uh I don't, I don't personally know, but I've seen them, uh, and they they just are kind of crazy in their way. But, I mean, I know they're not really crazy, but they, they could be crazy. Because when I walk by them, they're, they're just constantly talking to themselves out loud. They don't really interact with people. I mean, they, they do, but I've seen that people talk to them and, and stuff like that. Uh, it's not my cup of tea to go up there and ask them because cause I'm a Marine and I I'm very much understand that you don't stop for anything. You have a purpose when you walk and it's not my it's not my place to stop. Like, I mean, one time I think I saw someone look pretty much dead on the ground one time and I had to call the police and tell them that, hey, this homeless guy looks like he's dead. And it, I think it turned out that he wasn't dead, but he looked dead. And But that's just kind of the the thing where going to walking to class every day is just it's always a journey let's just tell, it's, it's always an adventure because you don't know what's going to happen when you when, when you're going on your way to class that's just crazy and I don't understand that one bit uh, I think that has a lot to do with preying on naive college students so that's that's interesting to me um and yeah, that is a market because, you know, college students are college students. There's a lot going on there, a lot of events, a lot of good things that happen there. But then you have the people who are preying on them for that very reason of getting uh, money from them and just like panhandling all the time. So like the question, if, in case you guys are just now joining us, is why is UNLV surrounded by, by, uh, by poverty? Why is UNLV surrounded by poverty? And it's a question that has boggled my mind for a long time. And I can see that it's been boggling other people's minds too because, um, because I posted this very same question up on uh, a website called Quora and I've been getting a lot of views. And that's usually what I derive my blog posts on my own personal website on wolfofficial.com is where uh, I get a lot of views and a lot of responses and I try to figure out uh, what to write about or what to talk about and I, that way I'm also meeting people's needs so I'm not just talking about like random things these are issues and concerns that people have on the regular and, and I love this uh, this is what I do but um, so yeah I didn't get a whole lot of people uh, necessarily commenting on why UNLV is surrounded by poverty but people are following the conversation so I thought I'd be the first one to speak up about it and I've um, Again, if you're just joining us, I'm from Vegas, and I've lived here my whole life. I know exactly what happens here. Um, I know there's a lot of things that go on that I don't know about, because obviously we don't know everything. And, but yeah, I'm a college student. I go to UNLV, 
and I live next to UNLV. Uh, I've chose to live off campus and still go to school. I finish up my degree next year, and I, um, I'm probably still going to live in that same area after I graduate college because the, the rent is so cheap. I got a great landlady, and it just is its good for me, but it'll be different when I graduate because I won't have to be walking to school every day at, with people that are asking me for money, like homeless people. I won't be getting panhandled because there's no need. After I graduate, I'll just live at my house over there across the street from UNLV, and there's still a lot of poverty going on around that area. Um, but for me, when I graduate, I'll just be waking up and uh, going to work, I guess you could say, every day. So that's kind of like the, the standard of what people do after they graduate. They just start working, I guess. But for me, I want to I wanna go ahead, graduate, and I want to keep doing my own business of blogging and podcasting and trying to make money doing that way. But So hopefully I won't have to get up and go to work. But... For the people that live around me, I can tell you that much that they are, we are surrounded by, we have to lock our doors every night, unfortunately, and um, the thing is, there's just a lot of diversity that is going on around UNLV campus, and the campus itself is, it looks like a desert. There are some parts of it that have really cool architecture, like I, I see them in the future, I see what they're doing, and it's, it's going to look pretty amazing. Uh, but I see it being more or less buildings, not necessarily plants, because trees and stuff like that, those really bring out a campus. But Vegas is a desert, so it's going to have to do something different. It's going to start looking a little bit different at UNLV. Uh, if you looked at some of the architecture down there at the Strip, you notice that there are some very beautiful buildings there that make you go, whoa, this is crazy. So you take that and you apply that to UNLV and you can see that a lot of the buildings inside UNLV are going to start being more and more um, beautifully designed. So that's pretty interesting to think about and because that's the only thing you can do. But So they're going to start making the buildings on UNLV campus a lot more beautiful. I don't know how much land they're going to be able to buy up around UNLV. So somehow they're going to have to do everything they can on the UNLV campus, but also they're going to have to do something on the um, outside of UNLV. Like, they have various buildings. UNLV owns various buildings. Like, there's a police station. There's, uh, there's another building over there where you get your ID card. Like, just employees that work around there. They, they have buildings and stuff like that. So, it's not just on campus. Like, there's a lot of buildings that UNLV owns that are far off the campus that it makes you almost think they're strategically slowly buying up buildings in the nearby area but maybe that's what causes poverty or something I, I have zero ideas but the thing is you can't it's you can't always buy up everything around you and expect that there won't be some poverty around you because you know, you unless there's no end to the earth, I guess you could say. I mean, you can only go up or buildings can only go up versus, I don't know. But, so yeah, we're just kind of talking about why we think there is some poverty around UNLV. And the answer is, we don't know. There, it, it, I, think, I think UNLV was founded probably like the 60s or, or something like that. So it's a relatively new campus. It's actually a very new campus. So, But it feels more like a business when you're going there because you're not necessarily, I don't know. I work there, I go to school there, and I live there. And there, there is community, but the, the best kind of community that I've had at UNLV is when I actually work there. So that was different. The, the community there working there is awesome. Those guys are like my family. And, but actually going to school there and not working there is pretty rough because they say that working on campus raises your grades statistically and that's what really um, helped me out a lot because I figured that once I started working with the people on UNLV at, at UNLV then I started to learn more about myself 
and that I'm not the only one going through this struggle of going to school. So that value there of working and going to school at the same time is the best ever. That's what I suggest. And um, it, it, doing if you're an undergraduate or even a graduate, we have graduate students working with us on campus. And um, so you get to see what it's like to, on the other end of working there. Uh, but the pay isn't great. I mean, it's okay. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's really hard out there. If you don't, if you, um, if you, if you live on campus, then it, you might have a better chance of not seeing as much poverty. But I can tell you, if you live on campus and you go out to that McDonald's that's right there, that's like the worst journey of your life. Like, you could get mugged so easily. And it's just so, but you don't see it as much. For me, I don't live on campus. I live very close to campus where I walk and I see people that are, I see a lot of crazy things happen right outside of UNLV and it just blows my mind. Like, this is young adults and they need they need to know that they're going to be safe. So they, they can't be thinking about other things about, like, they can't have be worried about getting mugged. They need to be focused on their studies. And how do they do that when they're constantly trying to struggle outside of UNLV? Like, they're, they're surrounded by poverty, people who aren't going anywhere with their life. And it hurts them, and it hurts their studies, and it hurts everything. And that's probably why they drop out. That's probably why the dropout rate is so high because as soon as they step off that campus they're surrounded by poverty and it gets me worked up emotionally and I'll always do my best to take out the emotion out of it but it's true it, it's it's hard out there for them the ones who don't have family the ones who are doing it on their own who don't have financial support who are working full-time who aren't taking out student loans they're the ones that are taking the bus every single day they're the ones who are <clears throat> they're the ones who are struggling every single day and they're in the cold they're taking the bus they're doing what is necessary to get that college degree and what do we give them we give them limited resources yes there's look there's there's resources all around the campus but these some of these students i for one didn't know about like the tutoring services i finally figured out where the tutoring was and i didn't know how many different tutorings there were and so, the ones who are struggling are doing so with a lot of baggage. They're doing it with a lot of worries on their shoulders about getting mugged and stuff like that instead of focusing on, on their studies. And uh, we'll go off a little bit, but uh, we're about to end this podcast episode. But I wanted to mention, too, one more thing, that the, the resources aren't quite there yet for students, in my opinion. And this is coming from a consumer. I am a student, and I've noticed that the tutoring there, they, they leave us hanging. I would, if I didn't work at UNLV and I was going to tutoring, okay, and that's all I had was that tutoring, that only kind of resource that made me feel like I'm a part of UNLV because we've had some pretty great tutoring sessions at UNLV, and uh, I made me feel like, you know, working hard. Tutoring is like the number one thing that you can get people in and dedicated and committed to school, but our tutoring is crap. It's not very good at all. And I feel like if we get some of those tutors back, then some of those amazing tutors back, and we have a lot more tutoring going on. Like that whole second floor should be nothing but tutoring at the library. So that way that the students feel like they're a part of something again, not just like, you know, that they don't feel like something, like they don't feel like part of the organization. We want them to feel amazing. Like, and that's where you're going to make your... UNLV campus, that's where you're going to make more money, is if you start making people feel like they are a part of the community. And again, I'm not I'm not like revolting or anything. I'm just saying that at some point I'm not going to be around any, any longer, and I'm not going to be at UNLV, and I'm going to be off doing my own thing. I will have already gotten my degree, but for the ones for the future, what I can say is that make them feel at home. Make them feel like they're working there. Make that tutoring area as if they're happy to go there and learn new things. Have great tutors in addition to those instructors because we're not getting... The instructors there are not where they need to be. There's a lot of really good ones, but there's not a lot that are even helping at all. So if we can't give students attention during professor hours, then do so during tutoring. All right, everyone, this is it for this podcast episode. Thank you so much. I will see you on the next one. Go to my website, wooofficial.com, to learn more about all the things that I talk about, writing, 
business inspiration. I got to go. Talk to you soon, and goodbye.